so great to see you, Tim, in person. Your book is excellent, Mission Possible, Go Create a Life That Counts. Uh, baseball player, football player, Heisman Trophy winner, now broadcaster. <laughs> uh, but we're not necessarily talking about that. Before we get into the heart of the book, your reaction to Russell Wilson be going to the Broncos. Honestly, I, I, I got to say I'm kind of excited about it. I, I still... I think I'm a little bit biased, but I, I, I just think Bronco fans are awesome. I, I can't tell you how much I loved my time there. And the I last think, thing you did is win a playoff. Well, the second last thing you yeah. did is win a playoff game. And then we lost to Brady, so that was the last <laughs> thing I did there. But it was such a special couple of years being there with the Bronco fans, and I still love them, to be honest with you. I think they're incredible fans, and I think Russell going there, I think it's going to bring a lot of life. I think they have a lot of talent there. I think they're going to be really good, and also, I'm excited about that division. That's going to be crazy good. Right. Like, are you kidding? You have the Chiefs. I think I think um, the Raiders, Raiders are going to be, be a lot better. Um, you know, Josh there now, that's going to be fascinating. And that's who drafted me too. And so that's going to be really interesting. And then, you know, the, the, the Chargers, obviously, they've gotten so much better. So right. it'd be pretty interesting. If they didn't bring in Peyton Manning, you think that was your job? Because you, it's, you were the last one started hard, before. Yeah, it's hard to look back and say, you know, what ifs. I, I would just say that I think it was so special, such a special time. I think that we were able to do some really special things, and especially from being one in four and then to go on a run and, and win the division and, and, and then and beat, beat the, the Steelers. And beat the Steelers. Yeah, that, that was uh, – that was – it was really special, and if you know, you you never know. Maybe if we, you had more time, could have done some special things. But also, uh, they they brought in someone kind of good. Peyton is pretty good. He ended up being he ended yeah, up panning pretty, out pretty good. Yeah, after taking a year and a half off or something. Uh, so it was interesting. I, I'm reading the intro to your book, and by the way, I, I loved. You had to write about a book. You've had a lot of success in your life, but you don't pull punches when it doesn't work. I remember you writing about you. You playing for the Patriots. You hitting it off with Belichick. Bob Kraft's inviting you to the house. You expect to go over there for a party, and the next thing you know, they go, "Tim, I need to see you." Yes. You gave up a huge uh, commercial too, yeah. right? Yeah, million dollars. Yes, because you said, "Hey, Bill, do you mind if I do this?" You're like, "I really, I wouldn't like it." He cuts you the next day or something, <laughs> right? I know, but what kind of got my hopes up was it was Mr. Kraft said, "Yeah, yeah, come over to the house. We're having the luncheon," and so I'm like. I made Dang, I guess I made the team. Uh, and it was like, whoa, not so fast, my friend. Uh, what happens? You're fired. So a football player, <laughs> baseball player, broadcaster, and I, he said, find a mission. I'm thinking to myself, on surface, okay, that's his mission. He found broadcasting after. He goes, that's not it. That's what I do for a living. That's right. But you found a mission. And your mission happened to you because you saw a tragedy in front of you. Yes. And that tragedy was this little boy with two feet born on backwards. Yes. Nothing to do with his... Fault, not his fault, yes. but his life was was almost over before it began. It was is because he was viewed as a throwaway. Because where he lived, they they viewed him as cursed, as less than, as insignificant. And, and really, the only reason that he was able to survive was because he had two friends that were willing to do whatever it took to to fight to get him food. Literally, steal food to to put it on his 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 table, his plate to give him food. And he was viewed as this throwaway. And I just knew that he wasn't a throwaway to God and he shouldn't be a throwaway to me or anybody else. And we need to, and I personally knew that day I was called to go fight for boys and girls like him around the world. And, and you, what year and was that? That was when I was 15 years old. Yeah. And, um, and so no it, one knew who you were then? Nobody. Um, and, um, it was something that I knew that was my mission. I didn't know exactly what it looked like. I didn't know exactly what I was supposed to do, but I knew it was around this. It was based on this. And I think there's probably a lot of people that are thinking, well, what exactly is my mission? I've never had that encounter. And I would say, yeah, I, I don't know exactly what your mission is, but have your eyes ever been open to a need, to a problem, to a hurting person? And has your heart ever been pricked to want to go do something? If so, that, that might be God saying, hey, go start to meet this need. And you might not know exactly what it looks like. You know, might not know exactly the end goal or how the twists and the turns in it, but it's got to also start with action, right? And, and I believe that that when we see this and we feel this, we need to act. And, it will, you know, it's also living by faith. You don't know exactly what all the next steps are, but we have to take the step and, and being everyone willing to go do something and we'll continue to learn in the process. So what was the foundation that started then and how has your mission even brought you to the war in Ukraine? Well, I, I, I'll tell you that when, I, didn't, I wasn't allowed to start it because uh, NCAA rules until I finished uh, college and then was literally the first or second day after I graduated 
created uh, was when I started the Tim Tebow Foundation. And our mission statement was literally just thinking about that boy. It was one of the easiest things I did. Okay, what is our mission statement? I thought about him and I said, okay, it's to bring faith, hope, and love to those needing a brighter day in their darkest hour of need. Because I, what does that boy need? He needs faith, hope, and love because he is in his darkest hour of need. He is a throwaway, and he needs help, mm -hmm. and he urgently needs help. And so that was our mission statement, and it started with orphans, and it started with special needs, and then it led into hospitals, and it then ultimately led into more in the fight against human trafficking and growing and growing. And um, and it's been something that has developed and developed throughout the years because we didn't know exactly at first what it looked like, but God has continued to show us as we've gone. And now the Ukraine war starts and you're not a bystander. What are you doing? Well, um, we, we've been able to, to serve in the Ukraine for, for several years, especially through um, our Night to Shine host churches, which Night to Shine is a worldwide prom for people with special needs. And there's been many churches in Ukraine that have hosted and partnered with us in that and loving the special needs community. And so, um, you know, when all of this happened and we're communicating with our host churches and our host partners that take care of orphans and special needs kids, it's what do you, what do you need? How can we help? How can we support? And I'll tell you, that we think that 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 we're supporting, and maybe we are a little bit, but I'll tell you, they're inspiring us more than we could ever do for them. The heroes that we have, that we have seen, that we have talked to, that we have partnered with, that we have watched, they're not everyday heroes. And they're, they're great courage, right? Heroes. This is great courage. Crazy courage. It is incredible to watch. I mean... The, you know, because of the time difference, our team's getting up super early in the middle of the night to talk to them first thing in the morning so they can figure out in the day what do they need, how can we support, how can we get them to safety, and then working with, you know, different partners um, like Lifesong and trying to get safe homes ready in, in Poland. So you got to find out where the Russian troops are, where the roads yeah, are. Yeah, there, there's so many different things. We're grateful for so many partners that are working on different parts of this. But but what, what they say is... Hey, you know, we, we know bombs are going off around us, but we know God's in control. And this is exactly where we're supposed to be. And so many have had the chance when they've taken groups out to stay out. And yet so many of our partners go right back in to serve and to continue to help. And I'll tell you what, it, it really is true courage and true heroism. Tim Tebow's book is called Mission Possible. If people want to help you out with the foundation and find out their mission, where do they go? Uh, TimTebowFoundation.org. Gotcha. Now, you uh, win the Heisman. A, a sophomore, right? Yes, sir. A sophomore. You win the Heisman as a sophomore. You you win a playoff game, shock the world, and beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. You also, uh, for two years, you're making your way through the minor leagues. You almost made it as a tight end in this league, too. You've had uh, unbelievable success, international fame. How does that compare to this, to what you're doing with your foundation? How does that success in sports it compare? It doesn't compare. Not at all. It doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Uh, Brian, I, th I think the thing that... Um, the world is going to tell us, and it has, and, and even at times I bought into it, unfortunately, is that we need to strive for money, fame, and power, and that it's going to be rewarding. And the more of that you get, the the more identity, the stronger identity, the, the more you're going to have. And I just don't believe it. I, I think God's economy is different. I believe the more you give, the more you actually have. And I've seen that with so many of our partners around the world. We just got back from, from Africa where we were for, for a month, and you see it with so many people that that materially don't have much, but spiritually, emotionally, relationally, they have everything because of what they're doing every day. And I'll tell you what, those are also heroes of mine. So and you it, took your fame and your power and you're using it for other people. Well, I think what I I've really would love to do and strive to do is take the, the little bit of success that, that God has blessed me with and turn that success into significance. Because I believe success is about us, but significance is about other people. And I would rather have a life of significance than a life of success, because I believe there's going to be a lot of people that at the end of their life, they had a lot of success, and then they realize it doesn't mean anything. And I don't want to be someone that at the end of my life, I have a, I have a little bit of success and I realize oh my gosh, it's really a tragedy because none of it matters. You just sold like a million books because that's what your book's about. Uh, Mission Possible, uh, go create a life that counts. Tim, you're doing that and only halfway there. Oh, I appreciate you, brother. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.